Today's conference will provide an opportunity to take a look at and analyze the impact of armed conflicts on women and girls and the gender dimensions of peace process and conflict resolution. So this is a very interesting moment to get in dialogue with people outside academia. To foster dialogue, participation and a culture of inclusion. To bring in civil society voices into decision making. Civil society uh, organizations and activists often have a much higher degree of understanding of gender issues. Work between the different organizations must be much more integrated as we know it is now. So the military components for peacekeeping is guaranteeing safe and secure environment. You can't really separate the issue of security with the issue of peace building. It really is one big blur. Peace building has become securitized, militarized. But to fight kind of the, the traditional structures while being respectful of them. Haram initially used female suicide bombers because there was a perception that females were not seen as combatants. They cannot translate very strategic concepts and bridge it to the tactical programmatic on the ground. Everything's happening in the same time. So uh, the impact of, that the military has when they enter to pacify, it also has an impact directly on society. And that's why you need to have the local actors. And they need to be in the decision making about peace building. What do we actually mean by equality? Do we mean that women are treated like men? The need for women's meaningful participation doesn't start or end at the negotiation table. Another major goal is to increase the number of women in the armed forces and military peace support. Can we also imagine what equality might look like if people are respected for their differences. First of all, that gender analysis is a power analysis. Gender always operates in intersection with other identity markers. People aren't just one thing, and even looking solely at their gender, you really need to look intersectionally, trying to take the needs of an entire population into account. When I see the military and question of peace building, I see uh, two different worlds speaking two different languages really fundamentally take a broader approach to security and, and understand what it is that is locally understood as the security needs. But I think we have to translate the research into practical operational actions. Otherwise, it will just remain research.